Curious which forgotten 1980s lunches we think deserve a second round? Come along as we taste test 20 diverse lunches that made our lunch break something to look forward to. Time to see if these forgotten lunches are truly worth the culinary comeback tour. Let's go! Known affectionately as a hot dish in the Midwest, the tater tot casserole is a quintessential example of American comfort food. It was popularized in the 1950s as a convenient way to create a hearty meal with minimal ingredients. The casserole consists of a base layer of ground beef seasoned with onions, a binder of condensed mushroom or chicken soup, a layer of canned or frozen vegetables, and a top layer of crisp tater tots. As it bakes, the tater tots form a golden crust, providing a crunchy contrast to the creamy, savory mixture below. The casserole's popularity also demonstrates the post-war American innovation in using processed and prepackaged foods to save time in the kitchen, a trend that mirrored the nation's growing emphasis on convenience and efficiency in everyday life. Ham and cheese quiche, which gained prominence in American kitchens in the 1970s, is a refined yet simple dish, originating from French cuisine but fully embraced by American bakers. This savory pie combines a flaky pastry crust with a luscious filling of eggs, cream, diced ham, and shredded cheese, often Swiss or cheddar for extra flavor. The quiche is baked until the egg mixture sets into a creamy custard, perfect for slicing. It became popular not just for its delicious taste, but for its adaptability to various dining occasions, from brunches to dinner parties. The dish's versatility extends to the kitchen, where variations might include different types of meat, vegetables, or cheeses, depending on the cook's preference or the ingredients on hand. Moreover, the preparation of quiche contributed to its status as a dish that could be dressed up for guests or scaled down for a simple family meal. The taco salad, which emerged as a popular dish in American cuisine in the 1960s, is a notable example of Tex-Mex culinary fusion. The typical taco salad starts with a crunchy tortilla bowl filled with lettuce, seasoned ground beef, shredded cheese, diced tomatoes, and black olives, finished with dollops of sour cream and salsa. This dish illustrates the adaptability of Mexican cuisine to American tastes, incorporating more cheese and sour cream than traditional Mexican salads. Taco salads became particularly popular in the 1980s, often served at gatherings and potlucks due to their customizable nature which allowed guests to tailor the toppings to their preferences. Taco salad's popularity also coincided with a growing interest in more casual dining experiences at home, where families and friends could interact in more relaxed settings. Bacon cheddar potato skins epitomize the fusion of simple ingredients into a beloved American bar snack. This dish, which emerged prominently in the culinary scene during the 1970s, utilizes russet potatoes known for their thick skin and starchy content, making them ideal for baking and frying. The preparation involves halving the potatoes and scooping out most of the flesh, leaving about a quarter inch attached to the skin. The hollowed out skins are then baked or deep fried until crisp and golden. Once crisp, these skins are stuffed with generous amounts of sharp cheddar cheese and crisp crumbled bacon. The cheddar is chosen for its melting properties and strong flavor, which pairs well with the smoky bacon. The filled skins are then returned to the oven until the cheese melts into a bubbly, golden pool. The dish's widespread popularity helped elevate the status of the potato from a simple side dish to a featured player in the culinary world. Lunchables were launched in 1988 by Oscar Mayer, a brand owned by Kraft Foods, aimed at simplifying school lunch preparation for busy parents while appealing to children with fun, customizable options. Originally conceived during a company brainstorming session, the idea was to create a product that could use the brand's existing meat products in a novel way. The initial Lunchables kit featured crackers, processed cheese, and sliced meats, and could be assembled into miniature sandwiches, mimicking the action of building with blocks, which resonated well with children. Over the years, Lunchables expanded to include various themes like pizzas and tacos. The marketing campaigns for Lunchables focused heavily on fun and convenience, successfully capturing the interest of both parents and children. The packaging also evolved from simple plastic trays to more vibrant and engaging designs that featured games and trivia, 
enhancing the appeal. These kits not only change the way food is packaged, but also influence children's lunch habits by providing a fun and interactive way to enjoy their midday meal. Combining two iconic American fast foods, the cheeseburger and french fries, into one dish, the cheeseburger french fry casserole emerged as a popular meal option in the late 1980s. This casserole layers seasoned ground beef mixed with ketchup, mustard, and chopped onions, topped with a layer of french fries, sprinkled with shredded cheese, and baked until golden and bubbly. Introduced in the kitchens of inventive home cooks during the 1990s, this casserole was a response to a growing interest in recreating fast food favorites at home, offering a fun and fuss-free dinner option that delighted both kids and adults alike. Popularized in American households in the early 1900s, so tender Swiss steak involves a method of preparing a tougher cut of beef, such as round steak, by pounding or rolling before cooking. This tenderizing process, known as Swissing, lends the dish its name, although it has no connection to Switzerland. Traditionally, the steak is browned, then slow-cooked in a rich tomato and onion gravy, allowing the flavors to meld and the meat to become fork tender. This dish showcased an economical approach to cooking during the Great Depression, providing a delicious solution for less desirable cuts of meat. The preparation of Swiss steak often became a Sunday dinner ritual, where its slow cooking could proceed alongside family activities, making it an integral part of the family dining experience. Introduced during the 1970s in the American broccoli casserole became a beloved dish that cleverly combined the need for convenience with the desire for flavorful meals. This casserole mixes chopped cooked ham and broccoli with a rich cheese sauce, often made creamier with the addition of a condensed soup, which is then topped with breadcrumbs or crushed crackers for texture and baked until golden. This dish exemplifies the era's ingenuity in using readily available, often pre-processed ingredients to create a dish that could serve as a one-pot meal, reducing both preparation time and cleanup. It became particularly favored for its versatility, allowing variations such as substituting chicken for ham or adding different vegetables, thus catering to a range of palates and pantry contents. The casserole's popularity surged as it appeared in magazine spreads and cooking shows, often recommended for its ability to double as a dish suitable for both weeknight family dinners and social gatherings. The introduction of Mexican lasagna in the 1980s showcased the seamless integration of Mexican flavors into traditional Italian architecture. This layered delight swaps out standard lasagna noodles for tortillas and the usual marinara for a zesty salsa, layering ground beef seasoned with taco spices, refried beans, and plenty of cheese. Each oven-baked layer melds into a textural symphony that's both familiar and novel. This dish not only catered to the growing American appetite for global flavors, but also provided a fun, festive twist on the classic lasagna, making it a favored choice at dinner parties and family nights. Its preparation, often involving family members in the assembly process, turned cooking into an interactive experience, further solidifying its popularity. Cabbage rolls trace their roots to Eastern European cuisines, brought to the United States by immigrant communities. This dish involves steamed cabbage leaves wrapped around a filling of mixed ground meats, rice, and herbs, then baked in a tomato-based sauce. Each component, from the soft cabbage exterior to the rich, flavorful filling, plays a pivotal role in crafting a dish that is both filling and balanced. Introduced to American tables by the early 20th century, cabbage rolls became a meaningful dish among families often prepared for large gatherings and special events due to their somewhat labor-intensive preparation. The recipe's ability to be made in large batches and stored for later use made it practical for both festive occasions and efficient home cooking, bridging the gap between tradition and convenience in the American culinary repertoire. This festive dish, emerging in American culinary circles in the mid-20th century, cleverly combines the contrasting flavors of sweet pineapple and savory cheese. The pineapple cheese ball consists of cream cheese enriched with finely chopped pineapple, green peppers, and sometimes added ham or pecans, rolled into a ball and coated with crushed nuts. The dish captures the post-war American enthusiasm for novel flavor combinations and party foods that could double as conversation starters. Its popularity at social events can be attributed to both its taste and its decorative appearance, 
which made it a visually appealing centerpiece on buffet tables. The pineapple cheese ball also illustrates the period's innovation in using canned ingredients, which were celebrated for their convenience and year-round availability, allowing hosts to whip up impressive treats without extensive preparation. Crab Louis Salad, reputed to have originated on the West Coast in the early 1900s, is a luxurious ensemble of crab meat, hard-boiled eggs, tomatoes, asparagus, and iceberg lettuce, dressed in a creamy sauce made from mayonnaise and chili sauce. This salad is often linked with the dining rooms of San Francisco and Seattle, where it was served as a gourmet item in the early 20th century. The inclusion of Dungeness crab, a regional specialty, underscores the salad's connection to the Pacific Northwest's seafood bounty. Its enduring popularity was fueled by the dish's association with elegance and affluence, making it a prized feature on hotel and restaurant menus. Additionally, Crab Louis salad is a testament to the American culinary tradition of adopting and adapting regional ingredients to create dishes that become part of the national gastronomy. Cowboy stew is a robust concoction traditionally associated with the outdoor cooking of American cattle herders. This dish typically includes a base of ground beef or other meat, combined with a hearty blend of potatoes, onions, beans, corn, and tomatoes, stewed in a richly seasoned broth. The stew's origins are rooted in the practical needs of cowboys during cattle drives across the American West, requiring meals that could be cooked in a single pot over an open fire. Cowboy stew's durability and popularity among outdoor workers underscore its role in the folklore of the American frontier. The recipe's evolution over time incorporated local and available ingredients, showcasing the stew's flexibility and the improvisational skills of those who made it. Corn souffle presents a refined twist on traditional American ingredients, combining the native sweetness of corn with the airy texture of a classic French souffle. Introduced into American kitchens primarily in the early 20th century, this dish features corn kernels blended with a mixture of milk, butter, and egg yolks with stiffly beaten egg whites folded in to give it a light, fluffy consistency. The souffle is then baked until it rises and turns golden, offering a delicate balance of flavor and texture. The dish highlights the versatility of corn, a staple American crop, by showcasing it in a form that contrasts dramatically with its usual preparations. This adaptation not only speaks to the culinary creativity of the time, but also to the integration of European techniques with American ingredients. Cornbread-topped frijoles blends the heartiness of traditional Mexican beans with the comfort of Southern American cornbread, creating a casserole that is both nourishing and satisfying. This dish layers seasoned beans, often pintos or black beans, cooked with peppers, onions, and spices, topped with a layer of cornbread batter that bakes into a crusty topping. Originating from a blend of Native American and Mexican cooking techniques, the dish was adapted over time to include a variety of beans and sometimes meat, making each rendition a local specialty. The dish not only satisfies with its rich flavors and textures, but also serves as a practical one-dish meal that could easily feed a family or a gathering. Cornbread-topped frijoles became favored for its economical use of basic pantry staples and its ability to be prepared ahead of time, making it ideal for communal meals and family dinners. Introduced during the late 1980s as American interest in Asian cuisine surged, pineapple ginger chicken stir-fry represents a fusion that captures the essence of both American and Asian tastes. This dish combines juicy, sautéed chicken pieces with sharp ginger and sweet pineapple, delivering a dish that bursts with contrasting flavors. The addition of bell peppers and onions adds a crunchy texture, enhancing the overall sensory experience. The use of ginger, not only for its flavor but also for its reputed health benefits, coincided with a growing American fascination with healthier eating options. It exemplifies how global ingredients were becoming more accessible in local supermarkets, enabling home cooks to explore international recipes with ease. As Mediterranean diets gained popularity in the United States for their health benefits, the layered Mediterranean dip emerged as a favored choice for its delectable mix of flavors and healthful attributes. Widely introduced in the 1990s, this dish layers hummus, tzatziki, olives, diced tomatoes, cucumbers, and feta cheese, each layer offering a unique texture and flavor. 
Though traditionally served with pita chips as an appetizer, this dish also serves beautifully as a substantial lunch option, especially when paired with a fresh salad or grilled vegetables. Its popularity highlights a growing American trend towards dishes that are not only nutritious, but also substantial enough to serve as a main course at casual lunches or gatherings. Zucchini Panzanella Salad, an adaptation of the classic Italian bread salad, began to capture the attention of American food enthusiasts in the late 1990s. This version introduces zucchini and robust Italian bread, grilled to perfection, tossed with ripe tomatoes, red onions, and fresh basil, all dressed in a balsamic vinaigrette. The innovation lies not just in the ingredients but in the method of preparation that emphasizes the grilling of vegetables and bread to enhance their flavors before combining them with the dressing. This approach not only maximizes the textures and flavors but also aligns with a growing preference for grilled foods. The salad's popularity grew as it became synonymous with summer dining, often featured in outdoor meals and barbecues where a light yet satisfying dish was required. Lentil soup's place in the American culinary landscape was solidified as nutritional awareness rose in the 1980s. This humble soup, made from lentils simmered with carrots, celery, onions, and a medley of spices, became prized not only for its comforting warmth, but also for its nutritional powerhouse status, offering high protein and fiber content. The simplicity of its ingredients and the one-pot cooking method appealed to those seeking wholesome, minimal-effort meals. Additionally, lentil soup's adaptability to incorporate various spices and additional vegetables allowed it to remain a favorite among those experimenting with global cuisines, easily taking on flavors from different culinary traditions. The introduction of herbed rice pilaf into American dining rooms in the late 1980s can be seen as part of a broader trend towards incorporating refined grains into everyday meals. This dish, prepared by sautéing rice with onions in butter before simmering in chicken or vegetable broth, is enhanced with a selection of herbs such as parsley, thyme, and rosemary. The preparation of rice pilaf was often highlighted in culinary schools and cooking shows as a basic skill, illustrating the technique of infusing flavors into rice through the choice of broth and herbs. The dish's popularity was boosted by its versatility, serving as an elegant side that complemented a wide range of main dishes, from roasted meats to vegetarian entrees, making it a useful recipe in the repertoire of any aspiring home chef. Do these 1980s lunch classics bring back delicious memories? If so, like this video, click subscribe, and stay tuned for more nostalgia trips.